And so for our next presentation, we welcome uh, Dr. Sum Hong Ho, who is uh, now also a doctoral student uh, at Harvard University. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Lefebvre. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Um, I'm sorry, I have missed uh, quite a lot of talks, um, but I believe uh, from the talk uh, given by Dr. Uh, Dai Zhongpui and Dr. Zai Tsef, we already have a, the impression that there was a problem of communication. And my talk today is also about uh, maybe not directly on the linguistic barrier between the two people, but also something related. So let me share my uh, PowerPoint here. Okay, let's go. So we'll briefly read a letter from the famous um, Gaogu master, Jiden Gunbo, and then read some episodes in the life stories of uh, Gardamba and uh, briefly Dishireba. And uh, I'll give a, a, a very brief concluding remark about the Tibetan Tangut um, road, we can say, um, from uh, what we would have obtained by the end of this talk. Um, so the letter uh, itself is, uh, was from Jidan Gunbo and to a certain Gokshi Reba. I'm not 100% sure who this person was. He probably was um, Dish Reba when he was still a Guoshi um, before he got uh, promoted. So I, we'll just read some excerpts from it uh, and get some sense and raise a question about escape, Tibetan zhe or che here. I read the English and I put the, the Chinese equivalent underneath uh, for those who want to read Chinese. Uh, if you, I quote, if you do not put your mind on that region, I guess it's Tangland and want to escape like a caged bird. You should build a peaceful mandala of benevolence and compassion. What does it mean? To me, it, it means you should cultivate your, your kindness so you can stay longer in uh, that foreign land. Okay, this is another one. If you offer the great burden of holding up the teaching, and if you are bothered with many evil actions out of selfish jealousy or desire for wealth and fame, the politics and the religion of the king, I guess it's Tangu King, will both be ruined. So here, the picture is a little bit more complicated and uh, the addressee of this letter seems uh, to have faced some uh, risk of moral corruption. And then another one, even if it is living in hell, if there were beings, uh, if there are beings to benefit or cultivate, where else would the yogi choose to go. This is the, the part that originally aroused my curiosity when I first read it, because I know it's a different land, it's a, it's a foreign country, but how, how bad was it? What exactly the danger that uh, one might want to escape from? It was not until this lengthy biography. Uh, so the Tibetan Lama's eye view is only recently available due to the um, finding of a lengthy, 
I call it semi-autobiography of a very important imperial preceptor, Di Shiba. It was first introduced by the omniscient Dan Martin um, roughly, roughly two uh, years ago. So here I, um, yeah, we can read just one example because Di Shiba is not our uh, protagonist uh, today. Uh, when the king, the Tangut king, of course, went to Ka, and in the text, Ka is used for the capital area, or maybe it's just the city. Um, there is, uh, uh, there were two people with me. So we three, and we did some magics, uh, and then we were invited for the king, for to protect the king. And this person, unidentified, but uh, the name is quite uh, given in details. Beijing, Dirji He ran away. Chuche, <laughs> he ran away back on our way to the capital. As a result, just the two of us, the rest of us arrived uh, at the capital. Another, uh, very briefly, example from the same biography is then arrived, so this is Dishayba speaking, arrived at this city and consecrated the fort. I prayed for the dead. At that time, I dreamed of the king by Shavana and he showed me the sign of my escaping westward. So Yar Chue is already escape upward in Tibetan. Uh, it could be westward. So he showed me uh, with his, with the direction he's facing uh, where I uh, might in the future uh, escape to. So these two examples, uh, by reading this, I realized, okay, people did escape and it's not, uh, maybe not that uncommon a thing for Tibetan lamas in, uh, Tangu court or at uh, in the land uh, might escape back to Tibet. Uh, a very similar kind of uh, life story uh, is of is about Gardamba. So there is a brief English uh, introduction on him. Uh, on the treasure of lives and is relatively young than other Tibetan master who went to uh, Tangut land. He studied with uh, Jidan Gunbo and the person who uh, wrote the letter, but probably not to him. Um, you see, uh, Jidan Gunbo might be a pivotal figure that connect people one way or the other. And Gardamba visited the Tongu Empire uh, some time before the empire uh, was invaded and collapsed in 1220s. Here we come into the text. All right. Um, so here is Gardamba speaking. Then I met the king's royal chaplains. Uh, it's a, maybe not a, a very, very accurate translation for Lachu, but I'll just uh, stick with that. Uh, so these two person, Deu Xi and Bai Qin, uh, Shili Puba, these two important figure in uh, Gardamba's Tangut experience. Uh, oh, sorry, I should. And all the friends, I don't know what the text means here. Uh, Tibetan is Chobo. Uh, of course, in, in, in modern Tibetan, it's, it's just friends or helpers or just acquaintance. acquaintance. Uh, but here, I don't know if they knew each other before. Uh, we change gifts. Then the royal chaplain said, you should say, you should say here. Uh, we will help you. We will. Uh, 
respect you as maybe our uh, leader. Yeah, here the staying, uh, the theme of staying came, uh, comes up for the first time. And then the Beijing Shi Li Puba, yeah, he, he was another student of Jidan Gunbo. So they belong to the same uh, sub school. Please stay here. You will please the king better than all of us. You will benefit the king more than all of us combined. He also literally uh, did many things to make me happy. Yeah, he, he didn't like this guy. So then there's one time the royal chaplains and ministers said this to the king. This Lama, Gardamba, is a true Buddha. He needs to be our royal chaplain and because he has the intention to dis disobey. It, he doesn't want to say. Let's set him up to this person. You, the king, should please bestow him. This is the interesting part. The royal costumes, uh, a parasol with tassels, a seat with, I'm not sure about the translation, but maybe some, maybe the, the back support uh, or I don't know, like a curtain um, and a brown horse with uh, his head in red. Uh, right. right. Um, I don't know about the the tango, uh, how to call it, courtly culture or the uh, court ceremonial uh, protocols, uh, but these um, articles are uh, supposed to be um, only belong to the king uh, or the emperor, emperor and whoever has it will uh, just um, uh, let's say would break the law so here it's quite delicate a, a, a plan uh, the king sent a golden badge bearer to relay his order and saying to Gardamba, if you do not be my, it, if you um, do not be my royal chaplain since you have broken my law. So we have here the Nge Chim La Nu. So Chim, Chim is a very difficult uh, word to translate. Uh, it can be just his uh, jurisdiction or his role in a very general way. So um, I put two options here and it means you wanted to contend uh, against me, I mean, for my position. My gatekeepers, so Go Song, uh, will not uh, let you go if you do not have a... So here um, I have another problem of uh, translation. So the Tibetan is Long Lada. So Long is the uh, imperial order or decree, and Lada. I don't know. It's it's a handwritten and uh, certificate, or it's a portable uh, edict. So I put the portable de decree here, and the king continues. Once you meet the Chimjue. So all the team should be uh, added and asked if you want to read it, uh, uh, you want to uh, amend it. So I don't know what is Chimjue here, um, although later the word was used uh, for uh, Mongolian uh, Darhachi uh, here is not very clear. We'll see this word again and your life will be in danger. One. So we we'll skip some pages, and here, Gardamba uh, and his entourage have decided to to leave uh, without the king's permission. So then the teacher and disciples 
went west. Here we see the same direction. The disciples were afraid. Therefore, sometimes they pretended to be Doshi's people. And Doshi, the, the, the name is uh, still, I didn't, I haven't uh, figured it out. Uh, sometimes Guxi's people. So yes. uh, when they were about to come out of the capital city, Damba did not feel happy about Doshi's words. So he said to the disciples, instead of this, let's not do this, we should go to that large and that big guest house. And then they went there and they uh, started to make tea. And we have a very specific number, 175 armed, okay, I'm not consistent, but anyway, uh, uh, this number, uh, Chimje, came and asked, are you with Yushi or Gokshi? Where are you going? Do you have the king's portable decree? If yes, show me. And Damba said, <laughs> very confrontational, we're not Doshi or Gushi. Either are we, are we Dokshi or Pikshi. Here is Shagamuni's portable decree. And then we can imagine um, some people draw their weapons. Uh, and another specific number, I'm not sure how these how this specifically <laughs> is doing in the text, but that's a number uh, Gamba, uh, Damba remembered. And Damba did this magic. He stayed in the posture of prostration, uh, presumably asked for help from some uh, deities or guardians, ordered, um, make these bad people lie down. They trembled and dropped the weapons on the ground. And Damba said, make these bad people rise up. They rose up with this uh, kak sound. And uh, as was as stiff as tree trunks. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is the way <laughs> uh, Damba and his disciples left Xixia safely, I assume. Now this example is presented. Some people may say, okay, this is just, this is only true for a time uh, when the Tangut Empire uh, was facing many problems and was about to fall. But I have an, another, an earlier example. Um, uh, about a person called, uh, weird name, Ji Jiang. He was uh, remembered to have been detained by a local king, I guess a Tang king or some local uh, petty uh, lords in a place where the language was different from Tibetan. He spent the rest of his life as a court chaplain and he had no choice but to send uh, tea uh, to his teacher far away in Western Tibet. And uh, we have one uh, fragment uh, of Tibetan manuscript uh, of a teaching uh, traditionally ascribed to this person, Kijang. So this is uh, Another example of detention. All right here we come to the uh, here we come to our conclusion. So about the Tangut Tibetan Road or Tibetan Road to Tangut Land, we we knew that uh, it's a road of goods and knowledge, a quite busy road of goods and knowledge. But now I want to give it another uh, how's that feature that is risk and courage and the concrete danger include uh, 
state violence, that's number one. Uh, and through that, uh, you might face persecution from your, your colleagues, other core chaplains, and uh, epidemics. We haven't read, but in serial biography and wars, internet and wars, not necessarily from a Mongol invasion. So my conclusion is, uh, however realistic or imaginative, this element of fear in Tibetan mentality may have influenced later Qigong hierarchs' judgment when they recommended Saga Bandida to the Mongols. They had this memory of fear. And the option of going back home faded away as the Mongol empire expanded. Uh, so finally, very briefly, I think from other uh, similar Tibetan biographical texts, I got these uh, <laughs> uh, lists. <laughs> list. uh, what is to be expected of you? You, if you want to go to the Tangut court, you need a reference letter. Uh, you need good reputation. You need training in Buddhism and you need language uh, ability and you need constantly renewed knowledge because you face some computation from other uh, chaplains and what you may expect is your colleagues bring you some newest works by your master uh, by your shared master on uh, uh, buddhism from tibet and probably also your teacher's encouraging letter and maybe you may expect to escape back home. I think that's my uh, whole thing today. Thank you.